So I think one of the best Chinese fountain pens that I got this year was the Moon Man M2. And I think a lot of people seem to agree. The Moon Man M2 was a brilliant introduction to the brand Moon Man because it came with a very nice nib, a great feed system. The pen looked really, really nice and it was actually made from some decent materials. This is a proper acrylic fountain pen and it really set the bar high from what I expected from the brand Moon Man. So when I saw this pen, the Moon Man 80S on AliExpress, I made sure to go ahead and buy it. Now the Moon Man 80S was not the same price as the Moon Man M2. This fountain pen, while it does feel like a $50 fountain pen, only cost me about $15 or $20. This fountain pen here, however, only costs me about $5. So it is about one third or one quarter of the price that you'd pay for the M2. And even though that I did lower my expectations, this fountain pen really let me down. Now, first of all, let's talk about the positives of the fountain pen because it certainly does have them. And the first thing that I'll talk about is the aesthetics and styling of this pen because Chinese fountain pens aren't known to be the best looking fountain pens. They aren't known to be lookers like Visconti's, and this one certainly isn't, but compare it to a lot of other fountain pens that you would find on the Chinese market, such as the Wingsung 3008, it certainly looks a lot nicer than that pen. This fountain pen here has much nicer styling. I think it's more reminiscent of the pens that you would get in the 1950s and 60s. It has that older retro look to it. And the reason being is because they have taken a lot of styling cues from the Parker 45. It's not a 100% clone of the Parker 45. There are definitely a few changes, including the metal caps at the end and the band, which is different and has a plastic cap and it is a snap cap. So I guess it is not actually a clone of the Parker 45, though these pens do look similar. And I do have to say, in terms of styling, they got it just right. The next thing that I like about this fountain pen is the ergonomics and ease of use of this fountain pen because it is actually really comfortable to use. Now, one thing that I should say is there are actually two versions of the Moon Man ATS. There's the long version and the short version. And this one here is the long version. And I got this one because it looks like it's much nicer to look at and it is able to be used without posting this fountain pen. So that's why I got this long version. And the long version is really nice. In terms of the length, it's 135 millimeters long capped, 125 millimeters long uncapped, and about 39 millimeters long posted. So in terms of the length, you can easily use this fountain pen when it's not posted. Though when you do post it, it boosts it up to about 14 centimeters. And I think most people can easily use that comfortably. One of the best things about this fountain pen is the grip section and it is really comfortable to use because unlike other fountain pens where there is a predetermined place for you to put your fingers and the grip section is you know this long and you must use this grip on this fountain pen you're free to hold the fountain pen in pretty much any place using any grip that you want and it is going to be very very comfortable and that is just down to it being one long continuous curve and i really do like this about this fountain pen and other fountain pens with this type of grip and that's the one thing that makes this fountain pen really comfortable to use now in terms of the weight, this fountain pen is about average for Chinese plastic fountain pens. When you post this fountain pen, it's about 16 grams, and when you uncap it, it's about 11 grams. And 11 grams, honestly, is a little bit too light for me. It's on the lower end. But when you do post it, it certainly isn't you know a heavy brass fountain pen like I had on last week, but 16 grams is comfortable enough for a plastic fountain pen. In terms of build quality, this fountain pen is all right. However, it's obviously not on the same level as the Moon Man M2, though they haven't skipped out anywhere on this fountain pen. 
Now obviously, because it is $5, this isn't gonna be made out of high quality acrylic. It's some sort of polystyrene. It feels very similar to what you would find on a Bic. Though in using it, I haven't seen any troubles. And in looking at this fountain pen, I have to say it is pretty well constructed. There aren't any machine marks. There aren't any mold marks that are visible. It's been constructed really well. In terms of durability, I've used this fountain pen for an everyday carry for about a month now. And yes, there are a few light scratches. You would get that on any plastic, though this fountain pen has held up pretty well. In terms of the threads, thankfully the threads and the thread housing is very nice and thick on this fountain pen. So you can apply a fair amount of force to this fountain pen and I don't think it's going to break. As well as that, this fountain pen also uses a gin house style um, converter. And I do like these gin house style converters. I've only ever had one fail on them, so they are pretty um, robust. However, I'm not sure what nozzle it is for this converter, because while it is gin house styled, it doesn't have any gin house branding on it, and it isn't standard international. I've used a wing sun converter in this, and a bail converter, and a standard international converter, and I'm not sure what nozzle it is, because none of those will fit. And unfortunately, it's about there where the positive stop and the negative start. And I think most of you know what the weakest link is gonna be. And unfortunately with fountain pens, no matter how good the ergonomics are and no matter how good the pen is, if the pen doesn't write, the pen is not good. And unfortunately for this fountain pen, the nib and feed are just you know, bad. That's really what I can say. They are very, very poorly constructed and machined. And unfortunately with a fountain pen like this, a fountain pen that uses a feed that is very similar to that of a Parker 45, and a nib that is very similar to that found in a Parker 45, doing a nib swap is not as straightforward as it would be if you know the pen had a number five nib in it. So that's the biggest issue with this fountain pen. The issues that this nib has and the feed have really reminds me of older fountain pens that I got from China. First of all, the issue was the nib was scratchy out of the box. It wasn't polished well in the factory. And I can forgive that because a lot of fountain pens can have a few defects from the factory. And all I had to do was polish that using some micro mesh and then shim the tines a little bit. And that was okay. That went ahead and cured all of the scratchiness in the nib. But unfortunately, one of the things that was wrong with this fountain pen was the feed. The feed was atrocious. It really was bad. I would go ahead, saturate the feed. It would then spew ink onto the page. It would then go from being very wet to being very dry and refuse to write. I would go ahead, you know, put more ink in it and saturate the feed and it would just drip ink all onto the page. Then it would go all dry and refuse to write. And that was pretty much what I was getting from this nib. It really was not nice to use and it was probably one of the worst feeds that I had ever used. And that's pretty much where I ended my first review of this fountain pen. Though the thing was, I chose to scrap that review because I had really high hopes for this fountain pen. So I went ahead and ordered another Moonman ADS, this time in black and I had hoped that this would have a better feed and it would just show that the pen that I had there was just, you know, a one-off defect. And I have to say, this fountain pen was a little bit better. First of all, it didn't have any scratching issues that this one had. This one here was perfectly fine out of the box. And it also didn't have the feed issues that the other one had. This one here would sort of write consistently. The biggest issue that this fountain pen here had, and a big issue that everyone else that has bought this fountain pen is reporting, is the feed in this fountain pen is just dry. And that really is something that cannot be understated. This feed here is just really, really dry. Even with really wet inks, such as well, the wettest ink that I'm using is Noodler's Apache Sunset, it really is just a very, very dry feed. And writing fast is something that is almost impossible. This fountain pen will skip if you try to write fast. 
As well as that, this fountain pen here is, well, the nib anyway, is as hard as nails. There is absolutely no flex to be gotten from this nib. And as well as that, it just has no character and it is very, very boring to write with. I really don't enjoy writing with this fountain pen. And if this was the only fountain pen that I had, it would probably turn me off using fountain pens altogether. That's how bad the nib is in this fountain pen. And it really is a shame because it let down the whole fountain pen. So let's go ahead and get a writing sample from this fountain pen. Hello everyone, welcome to the writing sample for the Moon Man. This is the Moon Man ATS and this has the fine nib. The ink that I'm using is good old Parker Quink. And the paper is Clairefontaine. Let's get in with a quick writing sample. And there we go. As you can see from this beautiful writing sample, this fountain pen really has not much character at all to it. Um, in terms of writing, I guess you can say it's, it's all right. It certainly does write, but there's not much more than that. There is really not much flex to this fountain pen, and there's no line variation. Even pushing down on some of the downstrokes, there's not much to get from this nib. And in terms of line variation, there is pretty much none. And in terms of ink shading, well, due to its, well, dry delivery, there's pretty much no um, shading for this ink. As well as that, all of the ink is pretty washed out because it is pretty drying. In terms of dryness, Like that is a pretty dry nib, even though it is a fine nib, I have to say it is on the dry side for fine nibs. In terms of actual fast writing, Right, okay, it, it can do sort of fast writing, but here right at the end it is starting to push it and it started to skip right there. So what, a quick sentence and it started to skip. So I'm not very impressed with that. In terms of flex, as I said, there's no line variation within the nib, actually pretty much none. And in terms of flex, that's pushing down on it with no pressure and slowly building up pressure and that's pretty much all we're going to get from this nib so no pressure and full pressure there's pretty much nothing to be got from this nib it's not all that nice in terms of reverse writing reverse writing feels almost exactly the same as it does regular writing and looking at it oh we get the same amount of flex reverse writing. So what can I say? This writing sample, I guess it showed this pen can write, but that's pretty much it. This pen really is just boring. That's all I can say about this pen. And there you pretty much have it. The review of the Moon Man 80S. And I've got to say, I was really, really let down by this fountain pen because the first fountain pen that Moon Man had made, the M2, really, really set the bar high for what I was expecting for Moon Man fountain pens. And it's just a shame that their more budget, I guess more budget fountain pen, really let the side down. And I honestly cannot recommend this fountain pen. With all the issues that I've had and all the issues that everyone else has had, I don't think that this is the fountain pen to get if you want a hooded fountain pen. I honestly think that fountain pens such as the Jinnah 51A, which are very similar to this because they do have hooded nibs, are much, much better buys. The Jinnah 51A looks a lot nicer because you can get it in 
um, resin. You can get it in wood and plastic. And as well as that, it has a proper standard international converter and it also has a much nicer nib. And with that, thank you for watching this video.